Glitz and Glamour is all the rage for special layouts featuring your own red carpet royalty. So come with me to the land of the glitterati and get ready to bring on the bling. So I have a confession to make. My favorite part about coming up to the show is getting to play with all the cool crafting supplies. I have to admit that I'm a little bit of a product lover. So when I saw the cabinet full of goodies, I just went crazy. It's got clear drawers so I can see everything. It's got a great work surface. It's perfect for me. And actually my husband is gonna haul it out here before I leave, but don't tell anyone. So in order to get ready for today's show, I'm gonna start with an eight by eight piece of plain cardstock. And we're gonna cut a window into this piece, which would normally drive me nuts because it has two things that I hate, one measuring and two math. So I found this tool that's gonna make the job much easier. It's the high vis ruler from Judikins. This is the six inch ruler. And each of these long segments is an eighth of an inch. Now don't glaze over because we're talking about fractions. All that means is you need eight to make an inch. So all we're gonna do is count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a perfect border. Now, I'm gonna want a three and a half inch window. So let's start at a whole number, two plus three and a half is five and a half. So I just make my cut from two to five and a half. And this ruler is great because it has this metal edge so I don't gouge the plastic. I wanna be safe and always cut towards me. Okay, so there's our line. Now I'm just gonna rotate the paper and the math is almost done. I'm gonna start at my one inch border that we already have pre-made for us and then add three and a half. So one plus three and a half equals four and a half and then you simply slice from one to four and a half and continue doing this till you have your window cut out, which is so easy and no hair pulling necessary. You're gonna have something that looks like this. Now we're ready to stamp our borders. I'm using the mini Belio stamp from Judikins. This is the Argyle stamp, but it's got this bonus pattern, the ball fringe. I really like this because it reminds me of points on a crown. So it's gonna make a regal border for our royal kitties. So let's just ink it up, get it nice and wet there. And let me put down some stuff so it doesn't get dirty. And I'm just gonna try and line up my border as best I can along that bottom edge. As you can see, it's not gonna go all the way to the edge, but that's okay, just re-ink it and do another set of stamping. Now, what happens if you don't line it up correctly or you make a mistake? Let's talk for a second. Here I have an example of where my two stamps didn't quite meet. One easy way to correct this would be to just take a black marker and fill in that gap. Another mistake you might make is to not have your border exactly perfectly aligned. You might be able to see right here where it's just slightly off. Now, probably not a lot of people would notice that except for me and it really irritates me. So what I'm gonna do, my favorite technique for fixing mistakes is to cover it up. Actually, Chuck the cat will come in later and cover my faux pas. Now we're ready for the window portion of our layout. I've got embossable window plastic from Judikins. This plastic is heat resistant, so you can use it with embossing or a heat tool. So I'm gonna grab my catwalk stamp and we're gonna ink it up with our pigment ink. I'll just do it like that for you. We wanna use pigment ink because we're embossing, so you wanna use a sticky ink that the powder is gonna to stick to. Now, this is a little bit tricky because this is a slippery little devil. So one trick that you might wanna use is to anchor your finger onto the surface and press down lightly. When your stamp touches the surface, simply put pressure only where the image is. And then I'm just gonna gently lift off the stamp without rocking back and forth. That looks pretty good, but you can see we still got a few little gaps, so don't worry. Just take a paintbrush and go back in on your ink pad and fill in those spots that are a little bit dry. Next, we're gonna take our purring kitty and do the same thing. Let's do it like that, though. And get our little sweetie right up next to his mommy and I'm just gonna press on the image only and lift straight up. And that one looks pretty good too, but let's just fill in right there and there. And you can see still I've got a little bit of ink, but since this is wet, this pigment ink doesn't dry very fast, so I can just 
wipe it off with my finger or a Q-tip if you don't want to get your fingers dirty. Now we're ready to emboss. I'm going to use my snappy tray and set our sheet in there and I'm dumping detail black embossing powder on top and be generous, you don't have to be stingy because it's all going right back into the bottle when we're done. Tap it off and you can see because of static cling I have a little bit of residual powder there so one tip is to just go over a garbage or a sink and give it a big flick. And that should take off any of that residual powder. Now we're ready to heat emboss this. Now be careful because this is heat resistant plastic. So if you're gonna do this at home, make sure that you have this type of plastic because it can burn and make a huge mess and you don't wanna do that. Even though it's heat resistant, it can still warp if you put too much heat on it. So I have a little trick that worked well for me. I took my heat tool and heated it and then pulled away, heated it, pulled away, etc., until it was finished. It takes a little bit longer, but it's well worth it at the end. I'll show you how to do that. So it's starting to get melty. Just pull away and chase that down. You can see how it's starting to emboss now itself. And we just go back in and touch up any areas that didn't get hit without overheating it. Now you're gonna cut this into a four inch by four inch square, like so, so that it's going to fit inside of our layout window. Our next step is to use our embossable laminating sheets. They're made out of the same kind of plastic, but they have a sticky side. Now this one I've pre-cut to four and a half by four and a half inches. So that's nice and sticky in there. I'm gonna use these rocks from Judikins. This is the dollar gold color, and I'm simply going to sprinkle it in the middle of my window and I wanna make sure I leave a border outside that stays sticky so that everything sticks together at the end. And then I'm just gonna go back in and use my glass beads in 14 karat gold to fill in the blanks. That gets spread out with your fingers. If you get any rocks in the border, just sweep them back like that. And I think I need a little bit more. You don't need to be stingy with this, so just make sure you have really good coverage. Now we're ready to make our sandwich. So the cats go on the top and they get adhered like so. And finally, our layout goes on the top and then everything gets stuck together in one little package, gets adhered and closed off at the same time. Now, we just need to add some pictures and embellishments. We're almost done. You can see I have my sweet little kitties here. Here's Hollywood. He's already been mounted on this gold backing. And we're just gonna do the same thing with Chuck. I've also added some rub-on letters. And you remember our mess from earlier, our little mistake gets covered up like so. Speaking of mistakes, I have to admit that I'm a bargain shopper. I cannot pass up a sale, especially at my craft store. So I bought these chipboard shapes, I don't know why, but they're just not any color that I would ever use. So as a solution and for this layout, now I'm simply going to take a paint marker and cover the entire thing so that when you're done, you have a completely covered chipboard shape brand new to you. It's gonna sit on our finished page just like so, adds a nice little 3D element. I've also finished off with some stickers. This window technique is great because it sandwiches everything together so that you don't get the mess and you're not worried about those rocks getting out and damaging your pictures. This is a wonderful technique and it can be used in so many ways. Let me show you what else we've done. Over here we have me lucky Irish day layout from when my friend Karen and I went to Dublin for St. Patrick's Day. I've again embossed on the plastic and this time I've done a special technique with watercolor and diamond glaze that you can see step-by-step -step instructions for if you go to Forever Diamonds episode by Judy. Next we have this cute little baby frame that I did and it's a little bit opposite of the layout. I started with the sticky laminate first, I laid down the photo and then left the border for the glass beads. I then put the window plastic over it after I had stamped in permanent ink. Now here's another example and many more examples. You can see how versatile this technique is. Now that you know how to add sparkle and shine to your layouts without worrying about the mess, you too can live lifestyles of the rich and famous, even if it's only on paper. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.